In this video, we're going to talk about how I'm actually getting this project done and a couple of tips that I've learned to help you stay motivated and create things that actually exist in the world. So here I have the layout of all of the cards for my upcoming card game, which is called Bears with Guns. It's a game where your main character is a bear, which I haven't drawn those yet. And there are a couple of attacks that you have, as well as some defense. And you put your bear down sort of like a Pokemon card when you play the Pokemon card game. And then you have various abilities and weapons that you can use against your opponents. And it's just a fun time. And this project is, uh, I mean, not the hugest project in the world, but it's also not tiny. There are a lot of pieces of art to make. There are a whole bunch of cards that I have planned. And this is something that has taken quite a bit of development and planning and work to make this into a thing. And so it would be really easy to be overwhelmed with this kind of project. And this goes for video game development, regular game development, any kind of big bigger project that you have, you can get overwhelmed if it just feels like it's too big. And so I've been using this tactic that I like to call working in passes. And here's kind of how that works. I started out with this game really, really rough. Honestly, just kind of sketching it out like this, because I knew I wanted to have, you know, some kind of bear here who had some kind of HP and some kind of attacks. And then I knew I wanted to have some cards here that would, you know, upgrade it. You know, here's a gun. There's cards that make things worse, you know, have a health potion, stuff like that. And the other players would also kind of play this way and that my bear would attack their bear. And so I literally just started out by sketching out this kind of idea for this game because at this phase in the development anything is possible you can do the wildest things in the world and it just takes a couple strokes of the pen if you don't want to do something you can erase it or just literally cross it out like that and so the idea is you want to make as many mistakes and figure out as much stuff in this phase as you can because it's really cheap and easy you could call this the sketch out phase sketch phase it's super cheap super easy and the basic idea is you want to do as much as you possibly can in this phase because it's the cheapest and easiest. If I could, I would design 90% of the game right here. And honestly, that, that's kind of what happened. Most of the core concepts of this game were just sketched out on paper. So yeah, phase one was paper and pen. After that, I got some of these custom blank playing cards and started working with those. I call this the blockout phase. Basically what this was, was I had each one of these cards and I literally didn't even draw much on it. I would just write, you know, plus one attack points because functionally I knew if I had all of the cards that just said what they did and I put them in a deck that you could functionally play the game, even though it wasn't pretty, it wasn't very exciting because there isn't any kind of cool art or anything, but the game itself would work. And I spent a long time in this phase. This phase was probably three months, you know, kind of off and on playing with my family, playing with my friends, seeing if the concepts of these cards actually worked. Once I felt confident that the game actually worked, then we enter the refinement stage. This stage is all about eliminating the extra stuff. So just in a notebook on pieces of paper, I wrote down a list of all of the cards in the game and figured out where I had duplicates, which cards could be combined and what cards we just never really used or liked. And what I had after that is a list of cards that were fire, pure fire, okay? And so at this point, I was confident that all of the cards that I had on this list were going to be great for the game and the game would work well if I had all of these cards. By this point, a couple of really cool things are happening. One is I've done all this work for like almost no money and not a whole lot of effort. It's not like I spent days and days making amazing art for each card only to realize that that card wasn't that great. It's all about doing the minimum amount of work for the maximum benefit. The other thing that's happening is all three of these things are preparing me for phase four, which I like to call the framework. Framework is all about setting up the template for your actual hard work. It's kind of a mini version of this stuff, but for a more finished product. So the framework I had to set up was what do each of the cards basically have on them? What's the basic design? What are all the elements that I'm going to need? It's almost like a to-do list mixed with a template for whatever comes next. About this time, this is where I got onto Dextrose, which is the online card builder platform that I'm using. And I made these. This is perfect for this phase because this actually lets you make a template for your cards and actually have a little bit more work to do on this specific template. But it 
lets you lay out text that you could switch out and all of the art and then kind of drop zones for your photos that you want to upload. And yeah, you can kind of set up your own template. And I did this for each kind of card. A lot of these are basically the same. We have the card name, we have a little quip text here, we have an icon to show what kind of card it is, little explainer text and a photo. This photo is where I'm going to put the actual art that I draw. At this phase, I'm really thinking about what actually needs to be in the final game. What kind of stuff do I really need to nail down? And this part is really fun. That brings us to step five, set um, up. So phase five is all about getting yourself set up for success. What do I mean by that? Well, we can take our template and basically what I'm doing is sort of a version of the block out phase, but a little bit more refined. We're putting in what each card does here into our template and figuring out a bunch of stuff. For instance, I have these cards here. These are action cards, and these will instantly take effect when you play the card. I have this card called Tea Party, which heals one or two HP from your bear and your opponent's bear. And I'm just figuring out what these cards are called, what I'm actually going to name them, and what they actually do, and how we say it. Also going to fill in the quip text, although I haven't quite done that yet. This is sort of the phase that I'm in for at least some of these cards. And again, we're moving from easy to hard. The hardest part of this card is going to be making cool art for it. So far, you know, months ago, I had this kind of card sketched out. I had a card in my blockout phase called Tea Party, and it just said basically this. It was just written on the card with Sharpie. And this made it onto the final list of cards that I want in the game. And now it's here, and I've typed Tea Party and what it does. And this is all set up and ready for me to do my final art that's going to have something about a Tea Party. Same thing for Hibernate. You can skip the next two turns to heal your bear to starting HP. Great. So I need some kind of art of the bear hibernating. So once I have this quip text and everything in here, I'm ready for art. So over here, we have a couple of finished cards where I've actually uploaded the art. And now these are done. These are ready to go to print after I get all of the other cards done. But I took some time and went through laying out every single card that was on my final list because, again, it's pretty easy to do. And it's also pretty easy to change things still at this stage. For instance, this sunscreen, this was called special jacket or something like that. And I decided here last minute that I don't really want to draw a jacket. Sunscreen is a little bit more visual. It's a little more fun, a little bit weirder. So now we have all of these cards laid out as basically like a to-do list. I need to do something with some kind of little yappy dog. I need something that has to do with a trade, maybe like a trading post or something like that. Something with a raccoon for shady friend. And I have this to-do list for all of the art, which brings me to our next phase, knock them down. And that's really where the big work begins. Everything up to this point has been somewhat easy, somewhat painless, but now I've done kind of all of the thinking and all of this, even though the labor of it has been easy, there's been a lot of strategy and thinking, but I know with where I'm at right now, I could literally print these cards just like this without the art and the game would still function. So I'm home free, which is a really great feeling to have when you're safe and you feel like, man, this is going to work no matter what, then that frees up your creativity, which is great when you're in the phase where you're actually being a little bit more creative, uh, at least visually and drawing things. And because I've set these all up, I have a to-do list of all the art that I need to make. So I need to make some art for this hearty breakfast, you know, some kind of breakfast plate. And at this point, just a lot of that resistance, a lot of that annoying feeling that you get, you know, that makes you want to not really continue on a project. A lot of that is gone just because each one of these is just a little tiny project that I can do when I have time. Hearty breakfast. To make progress on this game, all I have to do is draw a breakfast. <laughs> and that's how I made all of this art, Hippie Gumbo. It's just a card called Hippie Gumbo. And so I drew what I thought Hippie Gumbo would look like. Like something for a computer virus, something for a really sucky die, something for form 2172A, Randy's trailer, magic mirror. Each one of these little jobs is just not that hard. And this is the phase that I'm in right now, kind of a mix of phase five for some of the cards and phase six for some of the cards. But I really recommend working in these passes, starting as simple and easy as you can to get the most bang for your buck, and then kind of going over the whole thing and refining it over and over and over and leaving the big amount of work for the end when you know that everything is going to work out for the game. And this works great for digital game development too. Your process might be sketching out your game, might be prototyping the main mechanics with, you know, just colored blocks. Then you might build most of the game with no art, you know, use a green square for your character, and then you swap out the art, and then you refine it after that. And all of this is from less work to more work, but it's also 80% of the game 
to the last 20% of the game. This is a really, really wise way to work when it comes to developing games or really doing any kind of creative project, starting really easy and broad and then going to difficult and specific. So that's the big concept for staying productive and creative when you're making games, whether it's a video game or a card game like this. And hey, if you like this kind of video, let me know. We can do more productivity, kind of tactical sort of videos if you want. Thanks for watching.